If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. Well, my name is Mark Bethel, fourth generation decoy carver. I do construction during the day and work on decoys and stuff in my spare time. My son Cole's here working on decoys and plaques that he puts together. So we're, uh, we sit and do this in the evenings and evenings and weekends and rainy days if we get a chance. If we're not busy doing something else. Fall and winter is the time we do most of this stuff. And we use mostly basswood, some white pine, but mostly this basswood is what I'm carving with. It's a smoother, easier carved wood. We start out making a Bethel decoy with a blank of wood. I have cut it out on a bandsaw out of a one inch piece of basswood. I have got a center line down through the center of my decoy so I know where the center of it is. So when I carve, I carve both sides. And I also have it marked for my top. So I know which is the top of the decoy and which is the bottom. And now I will start carving. And hopefully in about 15 minutes, we'll have a carved out decoy. Everything is done by hand on this part. This is hand carved like my father and my grandfather and my great grandfather did. So I'm just kind of on the bottom. I kind of watch where I'm at so I don't interfere with where I'm going to put the weight later. And I just carve down to that line and then I just round everything down to it. I have already got my center line cut from my back fin inside the decoy. My grandfather and my great uncle, Cyril, carved. My grandfather carved a lot of this decoy stuff. He was a mason. He did bricklaying and stuff and a carpenter. And in the wintertime and the fall, he would carve decoys to sell to make enough money to buy shoes for my dad and my brothers and sisters. And then when his uncle, my dad's uncle, Cyril, would do the same thing. They both would carve. My uncle Cyril was a big guide and fishing guide in the Park Abbotts area. If anybody ever was up here in the 70s knew, he would know of Cyril Bethel. And uh, so I suppose when my dad was little, he never really said much when he was alive, but he's watched his dad carve quite a bit. Dad would come home from school and walk past the Shell gas station and would stop in the Shell gas station. And back in them days, your oil come in a metal can. And he would pick the metal cans up from the Shell station and bring home to Grandpa, his dad, to make the fins out of. Grandpa would burn the Shell cans, he'd burn the oil and stuff out of them to make his metal fins out of the cans. So Dad would always have that was one of the parts that he would do. And my grandfather would sit and carve, and so would, when my dad turned 52, he retired and went over to my uncle's and started doing some carving and stuff, and he would carve decoys, but he, uh, dad did more animals, and he did quite a few decoys, but he was more into the, the fish on plaques, like what Cole's doing, and characters and animals and stuff like that. But dad did do a lot of decoys. My uncle Lawrence, dad's, Older brother did a lot, a lot of decoys in the area. Just trying to see if the edges are rounded enough on this one. This will be a plaque northern that I'm doing, but so I try to get them more round, like actual belly and stuff. But so this one would not get any lead or anything in it. And I'm taking too much. got it pretty well carved down on both sides to where I just have to take the sand block here and sand it. The smoother I carve that by hand, the less sanding I have to do, but try to keep the sides both the same up front. If it's off a little bit, it's no real biggie because this ain't a high dollar item and real fancy stuff. It's a, it'll work. It'll go in the water and it will work. My slogan is, my decoys will attract fish or get wet trying. And I'll guarantee they will get wet if you put them in the water. They will go around in a circle 
and I have yet to take a decoy out to a fish house. I don't know of anybody that took a decoy out to a fish house that did not bring something in. It might not be the right fish, but it'll attract fish. I think when my dad was carving, this was the part my mother did a lot of for him, was the sanding down part. Another decoy, fairly. You hold the noses together. This one here has been carved out, so I kind of know where to put the lead. But it's not going to be in stone. And then the top side, I got to make it so I can put wires in that you hook your, your decoy to your string when you're putting it in the water. So that's another one. I want to try to get this edge in a little closer to the main gap and stuff, so I'm just trying to carve it in and then I'll start on this side and get this one carved in the same thickness. It used to be a Fuller's tackle shop in Park Rabbits. The older people in old that are watching that ever seen, remember Fuller's tackle shop. That was where my grandpa took most of his decoys to be sold. And either in 58 or 59, we don't know for sure what year it was, my grandfather took in some jointed decoys into Fuller's Tackle Shop to sell in the bait shop. And for some odd reason, one of his decoys fell down behind the counter. Nobody knew it was there until Jerry Fuller, the owner of the place, in 1981, got the place back or somehow was taking and clearing it out to take everything out of the building, moved this counter away from the wall, and there was a decoy laying on the floor, a jointed 10-inch decoy. He picked it up and went down to the grocery store where my dad owned and you know, working and handed the decoy to my father and said, this means more to you than it does to me, and I know exactly where it come from because Jerry Fuller's father probably had bought it from my grandfather back in 58 or 59. So that decoy sat behind the counter till 81, never seen water or anything. He brought it back and gave it to my dad. My dad stored it away and now it's hanging on the wall in my mother's house. And my dad has got a jointed one and I am gonna get time here one of these days and make one and Cole's going to make a jointed one, hopefully. And I'm going to make a display case and put a four jointed Bethel decoys together that never seen water. And I think that'd make a nice little display case that my grandkids can fight over when I'm gone. We have our numbers. Like this one is numbered 37 for the, um, that's my 37th decoy in this size that I've carved and this is an eight inch. And then on this side, it has my initials. So it has my first initial and then my last initial. And that, so then we can tell mine versus my dad's. When we go to our shows and stuff, I go and see, um, I just go walk around every now and then. And I talk to these older carvers and I get pointers and stuff. and. They asked me, well, are you car, do you carve? I'm like, yeah, I have, I'm a fifth generation carver and Bethel carver. And he's like, well, I knew your grandpa when he came to the shows and stuff. And um, I, they just sometimes give me pointers or sometimes they don't. They asked me if I have any in the competition or stuff like that. So I go and show them my competition. And they're like, well, that's really good. And then they give me more pointers on that. I think when I'm at these shows and the older carvers share more knowledge with me is because I'm a younger generation coming up and they want to keep the tradition moving and want to have it continue on through so they're telling me the tips and stuff. I sometimes sneak them to my dad but I don't really want to and they're giving me tips and then whenever he would walk over they would stop talking and then see if you want to buy something or stuff like that but if then he once he walked away they would start coming back and giving me more pointers and stuff I think that you just want to keep the tradition flowing of carving and stuff and that's why I think they give me more 
pointers and stuff on it, more knowledge so I learn more. When my grandpa was alive, I liked going over to his house and I sat down, down in the basement with him and I learned a little bit from him. I watched him carve and now that I saw my dad pick it up, I'm thinking when he started doing it, I'm thinking maybe I should try getting into it. I'm getting into it. He caught the bug I haven't yet and that's where we really want to just keep carving and stuff. I haven't caught that yet and I want to catch it somewhat. We start out with a blank, cut out, lines put on it, and then I go to the stage where I've got it carved and sanded, ready to be drilled for lead and wires put in. This one here is drilled out the bottom, wires put in for the top, which you hook your lure to. This is basically the same thing, but only now it's painted white. I put my base coat of white on and sand it down because it does get fuzzy. So that'd be just a base coat of white on it. This is the stage when I put the tail fin in and the two front fins are in. And then the lead is put in the lead pocket. That will hold these two larger fins in and the wires on top. When that stage is done, they come in here and they get the back fins and these two side fins put in. Okay, so we're at the stage of where we putty the bottom, seal it in with wood putty, seal that up. Everything gets a one to two coats of white base coat paint on it. So it's really sealed up with white paint. And then from there, I do the red or whatever color I want. This will have to be a red and white decoy. That is just gets the red in the front. And after this stage, it comes upstairs and gets detailed. Now the detailing is done by my wife and then she will put the gill on and the eyes and then she details the sides of them. This one happens to be with the yellow and black striped on the side and then the other side's basically the same way. And then I take it back down and I put two coats of a sealer that seals it up for the moisture and water and stuff on them and then that's what gives them the the shine to it too, so they shine them up pretty nice. And that's basically done for a decoy. If somebody would like to purchase one of our decoys, they can find us at our shows or go online to our website called decoysbymc.com. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.